Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Sir Spam Tornado here bringing you some more World of Warships closed beta action. This is going to be a non-gameplay video. This is going to be a quick look at the most recent addition to the game. I was surprised to find a patch this morning, looked at the notes online, jumped in the game, and what do we have here? United Kingdom? The British Royal Navy in the game? Finally! We have a British ship, and it is right here. This Tier 6 premium battleship, the HMS Warspite. The HMS Warspite started its life pretty early as kind of a super dreadnought, was rebuilt a couple of times, and what we have in-game is the 1941 World War II refit version of the HMS Warspite. Again, Tier 6 premium battleship. So as a premium ship, it's going to be making you lots of money if you can do well with it, and you can put any... British uh, commander into this ship uh, with no penalty. Now, we don't have any other British ships, so the commander of this ship, if you buy it, will be the only British commander that you have so far. But once the game gets rolling and we get more British ships, uh, you can train your commanders up in this bad boy with no penalties. So, first things first, what's the price you have to pay to get your hands on the HMS Warspite in-game? A whopping 7,500 gold. It is available in the in-game tech tree, not on the online store. But, again, 7,500 gold, which, looking at the prices of gold on the online store, translates to somewhere in the vicinity of around 35 to 40 US dollars. So, a pretty hefty price to pay for this one ship. Um, looking at some of its characteristics, you can see its combat capability is 53,800 hit points, which is in line with a Tier 6 battleship. Its armor ranges from a 1 to 330 millimeters, so its armor at its thickest points is pretty good. You can uh, avoid uh, taking Citadel hits from a lot of the smaller caliber guns in the game, uh, but uh, against, you know, the 14 and 16 inch shells of enemy battleships, armor ceases to kind of have meaning in those scenarios, unless you're angle, angling it, um, which I don't even know if that's really modeled all that well on the game. I know that with the next major update, they're going to be changing some of the armor characteristics of the heavy cruisers and battleships to make armor more effective, because right now, uh, the highest caliber shells are really kind of cutting through armor uh, very easily. Um, one thing to note about the armor layout of this ship, you can see looking at it from the bow here, it's got these strips running down the side. This is, in fact, anti-torpedo armor that was added to the HMS Warspite. And this armor, I have heard uh, by reading some people's initial impressions, is in fact very, very effective at uh, absorbing some of that uh, torpedo damage if you do get hit. Torpedoes, if you don't know in-game, kind of act like giant HE shells. I mean, just think of them as like 600 uh, millimeter HE shells that just travel underwater. Uh, so when they hit, it is a giant HG explosion, and the game does check to see if it penetrates the armor where it hits or not. And if it penetrates, it does full damage, which is the damage listed on the torpedo. And if it doesn't penetrate, it only does a percentage of the splash damage. So these giant strips of pretty thick anti-torpedo armor along the waterline and below the waterline um, do a pretty good job of mitigating some of that torpedo damage. Um, so looking at uh, this ship's main battery here, you can see it's got four double turrets, so a total of eight guns of the 380 millimeter variety. These are 15 inch main batteries, so slightly larger than the earlier Japanese battleship guns, but slightly less big than the later Japanese battleship guns. Uh, what you get is two rounds a minute, which is a fairly comparable fire time for a battleship, so a round going out every 30 seconds. However, the 180 degree turn time of these batteries is 72 seconds. Yes, that's a minute and 12 seconds to turn 180 degrees, which is horrifyingly slow. That in itself uh, is immediately a deal breaker for me with this ship. I will not be purchasing this ship for a myriad of reasons, but that is first and foremost the main reason. 72 seconds for the main batteries to turn around. Something I am not willing to deal with. Its maximum dispersion is 226 meters, which you may think is in line with other battleships, but do look at the main firing range of these batteries. Only 16.3 kilometers, which is very short for a 15-inch gun. Keep in mind that, like, the Congo's 14-inch batteries fire almost 22 kilometers. So, yeah. Given the shorter range of these guns and the dispersion of 226 meters, 
These guns are also more inaccurate than most of the other battleship guns in the game. The damage is pretty good, 6,060 with the HE shells for a 35% chance of fire, and 12,590 with the AP shell if you get a penetration. But the really slow turn time, really short range, and really inaccurate fire of these main batteries is something that you do have to keep in mind and you will have to work around. Looking at its secondary guns, you can see it's got four of these like around four inch guns in these double batteries. Uh, these also count as AA armament. And then it's also got eight six inch guns in casements along the side. It's got four uh, on, you know, four starboard, four on port. It's AA capability. It's pretty okay for a tier six battleship. Most of it is self defense, anti aircraft fire. It's got 11 20 millimeter cannons, and it's got four of these monstrous 8 barrel 40 millimeter guns. Haha, <laughs> God bless Vickers. They do amazing things. Um, and these bad boys, you can see the DPS is 112 a second um, with a firing range of 2.5 kilometers. So you can expect these guns to do pretty good work on any plane that does come within 2.5 kilometers of you. And like I said before, those secondary guns, those 102 millimeters, also count as AA guns. And these are your long range AA. 5 kilometer range, but only 12 damage a second. Not that great. Moving on to the maneuverability speed, or maneuverability uh, characteristics, I should say. Maximum speed of 24 knots. Dreadfully slow. Horribly slow. And that's given the whole design here. It's very short and very fat, which means that it's going to be a very slow ship. But it also means that this ship is going to turn on a dime. Short, fat uh, hulls, very nimble in the water. They turn, they turn very well, but they do not go very fast. So you can see its turning circle radius is 550 meters. I don't know if you realize how tight of a turning circle that is. Um, to illustrate that point, let's take a look at another premium ship in the game. And you may think, oh, he's going to look at a premium cruiser or one of the, you know, higher tier uh, Russian premium cruisers. No, I'm going to look at a premium destroyer. I'm going to look at Grimyashi here, here, which has a turning circle radius of 630 meters, which is larger, almost 100 meters larger than this freaking battleship that the British have. This thing will turn on a dime. This is probably one of the most nimble ships in the game. Um, and the trade-off for that is it's, it's horrible top speed. Um, so what that really means, as far as game sense goes, is that uh, this is probably one of the, the easiest ships in the game uh, to turn your bow into a torpedo spread and really avoid torpedoes. When you can switch directions and turn on a dime and turn so tightly like that, it's gonna be really hard. Um, for both torpedo bombers and destroyer captains to kind of predict where your ship's going to be with their torpedo spreads. Also, like I mentioned before, that anti-torpedo armor along and below the waterline means that even if you dig, do get hit by torpedoes, A, this should always be at an angle because you're going to be able to turn tight enough that even if you're broadside, you know, you can get to about here when the torpedoes actually hit you. So you're increasing your effective armor thickness for those torpedoes to go through. And you should be able to, you know, withstand uh, some torpedo hits, if not dodge them outright. Its rudder shift time is a pretty good 20 seconds with the uh, upgrade to the rudder shift time. You can get that down to 16 seconds, which is a 16 second rudder shift time on a battleship. Coupled with a ridiculous 550 meter turning circle radius means that this ship is going to be the nimblest battleship in the game, hands down. Which means that you can really kind of stalk around islands and in narrow channels a lot better than other battleships would be. And you're going to kind of have to do that, given... Your max range of 16.3 kilometers is is not that great, and the inaccuracy at that range also means that really your effective engagement range, I would say, is going to be between like uh, 10 and 13 or 14 kilometers. You don't want to get any closer than 10 kilometers, just because your main batteries churn so slow that it's going to be kind of hard uh, to keep your guns pointed on target, especially if you're trying to shoot, you know, a faster battleship or a cruiser. That's maneuvering, and you're maneuvering, and you're getting to that sub-10 kilometer range. Your guns are going to have a hard time keeping up. The other major quirk of this British battleship is its surface detectability range is 14.2 kilometers. And again, that's tied into how short this thing is. And also, you know, it's got a pretty low profile for a battleship to the water. So there's not a lot to look for on the horizon, which translates in-game to a low surface detectability range of 14.2 kilometers. Low for a battleship, that is. That's comparable... Um, you know, Dutch users, users, you can see that the Pensacola here, 
uh, which is, you know, it's it's longer and it is a, a bit taller, but it's a lot narrower. And it's kind of, you know, tonnage-wise, uh, a, a smaller ship. It has a detectability range of 15.7 kilometers, so... Uh, 14.2 is two is is pretty low for a battleship. You can kind of use, use your advantage to get in, into position, um, to open up with your shorter range main guns, um, but this ship you're gonna really have to kind of play it as a pick a direction that you want to go, and you're gonna have to go and stick with that direction. The low low top speed of 24 knots is just not gonna give you enough tactical flexibility to be able to kind of like, you know, reverse course, which you will be able to do. You know, you're able to change directions amazingly, given how nimble the ship is. Uh, but as far as actually getting back to like the other side of the map or flexing back to a cap circle that's under pressure, uh, you're gonna have a hard time doing that in this ship. So, uh, bottom line for me, this ship is 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 not worth it. If this doesn't offer enough tactical flexibility for my play style to be worth it, but if you kind of like a, you're looking for a, a a bulldog of a ship, you know that likes to get in there and just punch it out. Because the armor of this ship can stand up uh, to a lot of fire from, you know, uh, cruisers, destroyers, and the anti-torpedo armor and the nimbleness as well will allow you to kind of mix it in with those cruisers and destroyers and avoid their primary threats, which are usually their torpedoes. Uh, but against other battleships, this ship is really going to struggle, I feel. So, uh, all in all, that's the HMS Warspite. I'm excited that we finally do have a British ship in the game. I'm looking forward to some other British ships, as I'm looking forward to other premium ships, even if they are, uh, you know, premiums of other nations, uh, you know, German ships, uh, more Russian ships, things like that. So, 7,500 gold for a tier 6 British premium battleship. Again, that translates to around 35 to 40 US dollars, somewhere in that range. Pretty hefty price to pay. For me, probably not worth it, but it might be different for you. I just wanted to give you guys a quick look at the HMS Warspite. You know, in the game now, as of this morning, and uh, I'm looking forward to actually, you know, playing against this ship, and 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 kind of, you know, judging its combat capabilities against it in game. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, later today, there should also be another video going up. This is gonna be just a bonus video going over the HMS Warspite. I just wanted to, you know, kind of give you my take on what I think this ship is gonna be like. So there should be another video coming up, you know, with some actual gameplay in it uh, later today. But I just wanted to get this one out there this morning, just to give you guys a head up that heads up that yes, this ship is in the game, and then give you my general overview of it. HMS Warspite Premium Tier Six Battleship now in World of Warships. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and this look at this uh, honestly beautiful ship, and I will see you next time.